How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about the midterm elections. This is going to be a brief recap. If you don't want to watch that stream I did last night, which is about four and a half hours long. And before I even begin today's video, I just want to say thank you to everyone who was there during that stream. Thank you for all the support. Thank you for all the hilarious comments. Thank you all for just watching it, sharing it, liking it. I really, really appreciate you more than you know. But for now, I digress. Let's get into the midterm election recap. Now, I know most of you have seen by now that the Republicans have lost the House, but we kept the Senate. Uh, the House wasn't that big of a margin as far as, you know, the Democrats taking the majority. I think they were like 10 or 15 seats above to get the majority. And as far as the Senate is concerned, we gained three seats. And that's pretty important because the Senate, that happens every six years as far as an election. But the House is every two years. So in 2020, you're going to have another election for the House and things may change. People are talking about parallels to Reagan because back then I think Reagan lost 28 house seats in the midterm election in his first term and he gained one senate seat but then he went on in the second term to sweep I think he won like 49 states or something crazy like that so the same thing could happen here I mean you never know we just have to see how that goes there were a few key victories one was Beto O'Rourke versus Ted Cruz. It came down to the wire as far as I was concerned watching it, but Beto O'Rourke did lose to Ted Cruz. And Beto's victory speech <laughs> was something else, man. That, I mean, the cussing and stuff like that, that was really wild. I had a reaction to it online. I may put that in a separate video, but that was really crazy. Beto, you can't be cussing like that, but I'll move on. So that was a good victory there. Um, DeSantis and Florida for the governor. That was also a big victory over Gillum and Georgia for the governor race. You have Stacey Abrams versus Brian Kemp. Stacey Abrams, the Democrat has lost really, but she refuses to concede. She wants to go to a runoff recount. I don't really know because last time I checked, it was almost like 300,000 votes in between them. So she's not going to win. Maybe she wants some more to come in from Atlanta, which is where she's going to have a a big base is right there. You know, you got 70% black city, a lot of liberals. You're going to be able to have your chances pretty much right there. But Brian Kemp has the whole rest of the state and a lot of Atlanta as well. Quiet is kept just not enough to win the districts. But I think that race is pretty much over. She needs to go ahead and concede. Um, there was another race up in Massachusetts with, uh, what was that? Uh, not Elizabeth Warren, Pocahontas. She won that. I don't think anybody really expected anything different. You had the other guy. I forget his name, but if I can remember, I'll put that in the box. It was the real Indian guy. He had no chance, unfortunately. He didn't really get a lot of support. And quite honestly, I didn't know much about that guy other than he was a real Indian as far as, you know, East Indian for real rather than Miss Warren pretending to be a Native American. Um, there were a few races that happened all over the place a lot of republicans lost because they did not embrace donald trump and i think that trump was a humongous factor in this particular race he did rallies all over the country back to back to back i went to one of them in chattanooga which was fantastic and i'm glad that all of my guys and girls won you have um chuck fleischman who is the head of my district he won you have Bill Lee for the governor. He won. And you also have Marsha Blackburn for the Senate. She won as well. And Bill Lee stomped out Carl Dean. Carl Dean used to be the mayor of Nashville. So, of course, he won Nashville and Memphis, but he didn't win anywhere else. Not even Chattanooga, which I'm really thankful for. Hamilton County, where I live, is conservative and it always goes red. Shout out to my man, Jim Coppinger. But... The city of Chattanooga is kind of liberal, but not enough to have that particular county go blue for Carl Dean. Carl Dean got stomped out, and so did Phil Bredesen and anybody else that tried to run against the conservatives. But one thing everybody has in common here in Tennessee is that they all embrace Trump. When I was at the rally in Chattanooga at McKenzie Arena, I saw not only Marsha Blackburn and a lot of her 
assistants and campaign people with their shirts on and say Marshall, Marshall, Marshall on the back, which was a fantastic marketing thing. I also Chuck, I also saw Chuck Fleischman and I met Bill Lee and Bill Lee is a big proponent of Donald Trump and this whole thing. Bill Lee's a businessman, not even a politician. In many ways, I think that Donald Trump inspired guys like Bill Lee to go out here and run. But let's get to some people that did not embrace Trump, like Mia Love. So on the other hand, you had some that decided to, let's stay away, let's stay away. And they did very poorly. I'm not sure that I should be happy or sad, but I feel just fine about it. Carlos Cubella, Mike Kaufman, too bad, Mike. Mia Love. I saw Mia Love. She'd call me all the time to help her with a hostage situation. Being held hostage in Venezuela. Uh, but Mia Love gave me no love. And she lost. Too bad. Sorry about that, Mia. And Barbara Comstock was another one. I mean, I think she could have won that race, but she didn't want to have any embrace. For that, I don't blame her. But she, um, she lost, substantially lost. Uh, Peter Roskam didn't want the embrace. Eric Paulson didn't want the embrace. And in New Jersey, I think he could have done well, but it didn't work out too good. Bob Eugen, I feel badly because I think that's something that could have been won. That's a race that could have been won. John Faso, those are some of the people that, you know, decided for their own reason not to embrace uh, whether it's me or what we stand for. But what we stand for uh, meant a lot to most people. When you want to kind of like not really be on Trump's side, not really embrace him, you're doing a couple of things there. First of all, you're losing that star power. This is a guy that has the best ability to help you promote your campaign. He has the best ability to do that. Nobody else can give you the star power, the recognition, the attention, or the press that Donald Trump has right now in the Republican Party. There's nobody else. You can just try to run on your own principles. Is that in the third? But at a certain point, we all understand what star power is. Donald Trump has it. If you don't embrace it, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage and it doesn't really make any sense. Also, people may see your lack of embracing Donald Trump as not embracing conservative values. So if you want to run as a conservative, but yet here you are on TV, kind of like sending little slick shots of Donald Trump, you're not embracing him. They're like, OK, this is not really a true conservative. You're not going to rally the base. So the other guys are going to just do everything that needs to be done to fight against him. You're not getting those out who want to fight for him because they feel like you're not going to really be able to convey their message to Washington, D.C. You just leave it open for the other guys. Some of these people just pretty much fold it. And that's really a shame, but it is what it is. We've seen that a lot all over the country. And that's going to be something that people need to think about come 2020 when you have Trump get reelected. If you don't ride that wave, you just at that point, you don't really want to win. You're pretty much a, a mole or some kind of infiltrator who wants to sabotage the party and not actually win. So it is what it is. But overall, I think that I'm pretty much satisfied. There were a few ballot measures. Uh, marijuana became legal in Michigan, if I'm not mistaken. And it kind of became legal somewhat in other states, uh, medicinal and stuff like that. But I think in Michigan, they have full legality. If I'm wrong about that, let me know in the comments below. There was another ballot measure in Oregon. It's a law that's on the books, if I'm not mistaken, that says that local police cannot help ICE with immigration enforcement. There was a ballot measure to overturn that law, but it failed. So I guess Oregonians don't want law enforcement to help with ICE. You know, you may have a dangerous illegal immigrant in your particular area and the police can't really, you know, cooperate. To me, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but I could be getting that particular measure wrong. If I'm wrong about that, let me know in the comments. Overall, I say it was an okay performance for us. I'll take it. It wasn't bad. Um, this is not something that's uncommon. Most presidents have this happen. Obama lost like 69 seats in the House and six in the Senate during his first term in the midterms. So this is not really anything to be alarmed about. 
And like I said earlier, Ronald Reagan lost, I think, 28 seats in the House and one in the Senate and then went on to sweep the nation in the second term. So maybe that's going to happen here. I think it will. Or if it doesn't quite get to the level of a Reagan, it may get close to it because what you're going to see now from the House, now that the Democrats have it, is a lot of obstruction. They're not going to want to pass any laws. They're not going to want to do anything about the border wall or immigration or anything like that. They're going to just stonewall and prevent things from happening that should happen. Maybe their wish is to get a Democratic president in 2020. But what's going to happen is people are going to vote against Democrats for not getting anything done. Even those that are Democrats, they may just stay home or vote the other way because they feel like you can't get anything done. Why should I vote for you? I'm going to sit on my hind parts, sit on my hands, do nothing or vote for the other side because they appear to be committed to actually getting things done. Unlike you. So their game plan here is a big time gamble that will not pay off. And I can't wait until we have that for real red tsunami, that red tidal wave in 2020 when Trump runs and you see all these dominoes fall into place. So what do you think? Do you think that this performance was good for the Republicans, bad for the Republicans? Are you disappointed? Are you satisfied? I can't say I'm disappointed because, like I said, I wanted to get the House and the Senate, but I'm satisfied. I think this is OK. We have the Senate. That's very important because you're talking about Supreme Court justices. You need to have the Senate in order to get them approved. We already got two in there in Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh. You may have Ruth Bader Ginsburg kick the bucket any day now. She has one foot in a proverbial grave. So any day now she could expire. Uh, Stephen Breyer may retire or kick the bucket himself. He's 80 years old. Ruth Bader Ginsburg is 85. You may even have Clarence Thomas, who was not really that old compared to uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Stephen Breyer at age 70, but he may retire before the end of Trump's second term. So you may have three more justices that get put into the Supreme Court on top of the two that are already in there right now that Trump appointed. So you're going to have a totally red Supreme Court, uh, red White House. I think things look great for the future, but whatever your comments are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.